Weeks of parliamentary back and forth over the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's pet Rwanda deportation bill will come to a head today. Sunak will urge peers to back his Rwanda plan as it faces its final parliamentary showdown. Sunak is under huge pressure to make last minute concessions to ensure the bill passes. He has been called on by Conservative MPs and opposition parties to allow exemptions for Afghans who served alongside UK forces. He's expected to offer assurances that Afghans, including Special Forces veterans, will not be flown to Rwanda should they arrive in the UK across the Channel. Members of the House of Lords have raised their demands for amendment before the Rwanda Bill becomes a law. MPs block passage of the bill on the 18th of April. Prime Minister Sunak has called the bill an emergency legislation, saying the new law would stop the boats and deter people who cross the English Channel to enter the UK. The British Home Office has warned that thousands of people who have been earmarked for deportation to Rwanda could break contact with officials and disappear if the law passes. The UK government's Rwanda asylum plan is a five-year agreement with the country that aims to send some asylum seekers to Rwanda. As per the bill, no asylum seeker would be able to return to the United Kingdom. The Rwanda bill was first introduced in 2022 by the then Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Rishi Sunak took up the plan in October that year after Liz Truss's short tenure in office. Notably, no asylum seeker has been sent to the Central African nation so far. Well, we're now being joined by Adam Schwartz from London. Adam's a writer, political commentator. Many thanks for your time this morning, Adam. Rishi Sunak, of course, will be urging his... MPs to be backing his Rwanda plan as it uh, faces that final parliamentary showdown. How do you expect this to play out? Well, I think I'd very much expect the bill to ultimately pass, but I think it's worth really considering that this bill is not simply an ordinary piece of legislation, but this is really part of the government's sort of hallmark uh, signature policy, which is the Rwanda plan, uh, which has really, you know, been the government's sort of central policy since, uh, as you mentioned, Boris Johnson first tried to introduce the initiative uh, in the summer of 2022. I think these series of problems that the bill has had in the House of Lords are really just a part of a series of challenges that the government has faced with this particular policy. Now, this particular bill, uh, the Safety of Rwanda Bill, essentially seeks to try to sort of overrule or contradict the Supreme Court's uh, ruling last year that Rwanda wasn't a safe country, which sort of caused the, the scheme major problems because essentially it relies on Rwanda being considered a safe country to be legal. So I think it certainly has sort of constitutional questionable issues in that aspect. Uh, but despite that fact, you know, Conservative MPs seem to have been overwhelmingly uh, supportive of the bill, despite some sort of rebellions and amendments uh, the last time it was trying to get through. Um, but still, I would very much expect it to pass. But I think even it's worth considering that even if and when it does pass, that actually the, the bill still, the, the law will still face considerable legal challenges. Uh, you know, James Cleverly, the uh, Home Secretary, uh, you know, said clearly in Parliament, repeatedly that he thinks that the bill is compatible with international law but on the front page of the bill it in fact says that uh, the government is not able to confirm that it is compatible with European Convention on Human Rights uh, conventions which of course is international law so I think certainly will face further uh, judicial problems and the issue for the government really is that you know the last time that the government uh, had problems in the courts with this particular bill it took a year and a half for it to be properly processed now, the next election has to be held by January 2025, which is only sort of seven or eight months away. And so certainly there's basically no time for that to happen again, for a conclusion to, to the bill. And I think certainly the Supreme Court is very unlikely to sort of expedite this issue simply for the government's convenience. But I think it's really import, important as well just to remember that actually this isn't simply a normal policy, but actually it's very much, uh, I think, can be considered as sort of a taxpayer-funded political publicity stunt in the sense that really the outcome of this bill, this law, is not intended to be sort of governmental, but rather political. And I think, you know, Rishi Sunak is due to hold a press conference a little bit later to try to drum up support for this bill. And I think you can really expect him to kind of tap into those narratives of the kind of people's interests on the one hand with the Rwanda bill versus the kind of establishment's interests trying to frustrate the Rwanda bill. So I think ultimately this is for, uh, you know, political convenience, this whole scheme. Adam, do you expect to see a flight to Rwanda before the general election? 
I certainly wouldn't, and legal experts certainly don't as well. Uh, I mean, I think that is something the government would like to see, because I think it would show some degree of success that it happens. But I think, as I mentioned, there are so many legal challenges that await this bill and this law after it's passed, that it's so unlikely yeah. that actually all of those would be resolved by the uh, time of the next election, that that would even be possible. I think that really comes to the heart of what the problems of this uh, bill are, and that is the fact that it's both highly uh, unlike, uh, unlikely to be uh, legal uh, and also just very impractical. I think the reality is, you know, the government has spent almost half a billion pounds on this scheme already uh, with agreements with Rwanda. Not a single uh, asylum seeker or refugee has actually been sent to Rwanda, uh, which really shows that it actually would deliver astonishingly bad value for money. But I think really, again, at the heart of the problem is that actually doesn't really make any sense, the bill, because the government has repeatedly insisted to both the courts and the public that Rwanda would be a terrific place for the welfare of the people sent there because of so many job opportunities and, and prospects. But the reality is, how would something serve as a deterrent uh, if it was such a brilliant place to be sent to in terms of the kind of uh, accommodation and opportunities that would be provided? So I certainly wouldn't expect, uh, you know, flights to be taking off before the time of the next election, which, as we know, will have to take place uh, before January 2025. Adam Schwartz, political commentator from London. Many thanks there for that detailed insight.